welcome to the book bunch. Today we are going to be doing a, a series of review on the Bitterbind trilogy. So I have a lot to say about this one. I was lent this series by my husband's cousin who was so kind in lending this to me. Um, it was an amazing series but also I have some qualms so we're gonna go through it together. I'm going to start off by doing a like brief um, little review and overview with no spoilers then I'm gonna do a more in-depth overview that does have a few spoilers but shouldn't ruin the overall story for you and then right at the end we are going to address the ending and some other things that are going to be super spoiler spoilery so if you don't want to hear about them you can just skip the end of the video but thank you guys for joining me for today and I can't wait to get into this with you guys so the Bitterbine trilogy is about a person who starts off not knowing their memories they can't speak, which is why the first book is called The Ill-Made Mute. And they also have this big um, scar across their face, which makes them look super grotesque to other people. And so people in this realm kind of despise this person because of what they look like. And also the fact that they cannot speak. And all of this is due to... Um, the very beginning of the book the person comes out of this forest and they fall into this basically what is poison ivy that um destroys flesh so it's what causes the facial um issue and then the mute part of it is a spell because there's a lot of magic in this so we follow this person and we start off in this tower where they are treated very very poorly so they decide to escape and then we kind of throughout the three books follow their journey throughout the realm um they end up uh, meeting some people along the way one of the people they meet along the way is a very kind um kind of rough old man who has crazy red hair and he's um he's a lot of fun I really like him and he takes this person along with him to find this treasure um called water stair and it's all about that and then once they find that treasure it's about kind of what happens afterwards because that's only a very small section at the beginning um is what happens after they find this treasure um so there yeah that's basically all I can say without it being spoilery in any way but yeah it was really good I do recommend this series but I will preface that by saying if you need a satisfying or overly happy ending this is not for you if you're okay with kind of non-happy endings um definitely give it a shot because the the best part of the book is the journey um more so than the end in this regard I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars for the whole series I yeah I really enjoyed it it did take me a little bit to get into though like the first third of the first book did go a bit slow for me um but after that it picked up really quickly and everything else was really fast paced so if you can get through that first third you'll probably really enjoy it the only other reason that i gave it a uh four and a half instead of a five is because there is a lot of world building in this like a lot a lot and like it's all right at the start because you're kind of establishing this realm and you're learning all these new languages and you're learning all of these like made up words and stuff like that because um Cecilia she is super heavy on the world building it's very high fantasy so there's like a lot to kind of get your head around and kind of understanding the land that they're in and all of that kind of stuff so the descriptions are helpful at the beginning but as you start getting into book two and three 
it kind of becomes a bit unnecessary because she likes to describe everything. So every jewel, bit, bit of jewellery, every outfit, every hairdo, every room that they walk into, every like forest and creature and everything. So it is very heavy on the descriptions which I love descriptions in books, but I feel like this is a little too heavy handed for me. Um, so I just skipped some of the really big bits of description, um, which made it much better for me. If you really love heavy descriptions, you'll love this book. If you aren't super keen on it, it might be a bit off putting for you. But if you skip through the, the bits where it's just pages of this is what this looked like, then you'll still like the underlying story. So yeah, that is the Bitter Bind trilogy without any spoilers. So now I'm going to kind of go a little bit more in depth on that review. There is a couple of things that would probably be considered spoilery, but they shouldn't hinder you from enjoying the book. Um, so the first part is in the first third of the book when the person is in the tower you think they are a boy because that's what you're made to believe and that's what the person is led to believe turns out they're actually a girl who um the person who found them was in a very tough love kind of way was trying to protect them because in this world in this series women are very mistreated especially poor women so the old lady that found the girl made her believe she was a boy and made everyone else believe that she was a boy by like strapping her up and making her wear baggy clothes and cutting her hair short and all of that because she already had the disfigurement on the face they got away with it so for the first third of the book you think that the main character is a boy turns out no it's a girl <laughs> so that was a bit of an adjustment just so you're aware also, they like to change the names of the characters throughout the book continually. So through the whole series, the main character changes name like four times and some of the like other characters change names quite a few times as, as well. The author does a really good job at transitioning you through this because instead of just like abruptly changing the name, when she writes the name, she writes like whatever the current name is and the new name together and then slowly drops off the, the old name and that kind of thing. So you do get transitioned into it, but just be aware of that because it might be a bit much for some people. Um, additionally, so basically after they get to Water Stair, um, they find Water Stair, it's all going well, and then they go back to the village and they end up getting kind of hunted down so she goes at the guy that she is with he goes back to water stair to try and grab the treasure and she has to kind of leave to go find the um it's like, they're kind of like um they're not witches they're more like what would be the right word? They're female people who are super um, good, not only with spells, but also with nature. And they can help because they're so involved with nature and everything. And they've made this vow with basically these external forces that they will do good and help everybody they can heal people and do different things like that but they're not like they're not really wizards um because there's wizards in this as well but they're not the same at all they're very different so she goes to see one of them and to fix her disfigurement and hopefully find her voice and also her memories because she's lost all of her memories. In the world there's these seely and unseely whites which are basically evil and good creatures that are kind of immortal, kind of magical. The only thing that can kill them is other immortals. Um, and there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of that. Um, 
and yeah, on the way she gets attacked by the unseelie whites, which are the bad ones, and so her carriage gets destroyed and she has to run away into the forest um, with one of her friends who she's picked up along the way. They then find a third companion to go along with them who his name is Thorn and she ends up falling in love with him and he knows all about the land and everything because he's part of this elite um, army sort of thing that the king has and they to be this like elite part of the kingdom you don't only have to be like a master of swords and and archery and all of that but you have to be masters of the land so you have to be able to like find all the different foods that are in the wilderness and be able to protect yourself against all of these unseelie whites with um different elements that can repel them so like they don't like some of them don't like the jingling of bells some of them um are repelled by iron some of them are um they have to be beaten in challenges with your rhyming and your voice and things like that. So there's different rules for different unseelie whites that these people have to learn to basically become the elite of the elite in the army for the king. And so they meet one of them along the way and basically they help throughout this book to get um, this girl and her companion to the... Um, old lady that can heal her and that's the first book basically because yeah basically her goal in this book is to get to see the king to tell him about this treasure as well as kind of healing her face and finding this um lady who can do that for her so that's the first one and then the second one is called the lady of sorrows and this one is about because she has found the treasure and she's told the king about it because that's what she was told to do by the redhead man um, and his family. She gets rewarded by the king with all this lavish like jewellery and everything like that um, for kind of bringing this treasure back to the kingdom. And so she becomes a lady and she has to pretend that she, because her face does get healed, she ha and her voice returns. So that's what happens at the end of the first book. Um, so she then has to pretend that she's actually this lady and she's not this, like, peasant person so that she can be accepted in court and live this lavish life and, um, yeah, have all these jewels and different things. And in the first book, at uh, the second book, she ends up getting kind of found out that she is not who she says she is. And so she has to flee the kingdom. And upon fleeing the kingdom, she gets attacked by this super, super evil unseely white. So there's like lower level ones, medium level ones. And then there's like these six really bad, bad, bad ones. And one of the six is trying to hunt her down. He's called The Hunt, which is kind of funny. Um, and so, yeah, she has to kind of flee from this thing that is attacking her. And she ends up getting saved by Thorn, the guy that she met in the first book, who is of the elite warriors. And, yeah, then, the, um, then she ends up on this island um where she's kind of been put there to be protected um because this is a relatively major spoiler so just mute the next 30 seconds if you don't want to hear the major spoiler thorn is actually the king and he asks her to marry him so spoiler alert. <laughs> so she's being protected um because like the kingdom has gone to war against these unseelie whites which are kind of joining forces into this army and so the king's army has to go and to protect her she has to go to this island which is magically protected by this spell um and so she meets all these like mermaids and 
different other creatures along the way that are good. Um, and she has to stay on this island that is protected by this magical spell. The only thing is that with this magical island, you can only get on it if the lighthouse is on. And the lighthouse will only turn on if the um, there's a special signal given to it, basically, from the king or from whoever is meant to be relaying a king's message. And that's the only way you can get in because the lighthouse keeper won't open it otherwise. They end up having this big storm on the island and the unsealy whites trick them into thinking that there's these people who are being destroyed in this ship and the stupid main character, oh my gosh, he's so stupid in this moment. She knows what they're capable of and she knows that they trick people, like that's what they do through the whole time, but it doesn't at all cross her mind that these people aren't real and that they are the evil things that are trying to get in. Like she even says, as the storm is approaching, she's like, I know this isn't just a normal storm, like there's evil behind this. Yet she lets in the evil because she, like the light housekeeper refuses to. So she goes and like turns on the lighthouse herself and lets in this evil stuff that then destroys the island. Like it causes the volcano that's on the island to erupt and the whole island is obliterated. And like everyone tries to escape, but a bunch of people are killed. And yeah, that annoyed me <laughs> a lot. And then the third book is um, about basically she has found out that the all these evil creatures are trying to protect her because her memory comes back because she finds this golden bracelet that she had before she lost her memory and that kind of brings all of her memories back turns out she is this key to unlocking a gate between earth and the like fairy realm or fairy realm um and Basically, the king and the prince of this fairy realm are trying to hunt her down because they were both exiled by mistake when the gates were shut. So the prince um, was trying to exile the king, so basically betraying him because they're brothers and he wants to throw him. But by accident, he got stuck there as well. So now they're both trying to get back and the only way they can is through this girl because she's got the key and she knows where the gate is and she's the only one that does but she can't remember where the gate is and she ends up getting captured by the evil prince who yeah is trying to get her to remember and she can't remember and then the king and all of his men and all of the people of earth that are on the king's side all come to attack this prince and his evil forces and the unseelie whites that have all teamed up and kind of get her back and everything so that they can unlock the gate. So that is the series. Now we are going to talk about the ending because Cecilia you have some explaining to do. So this series is extraordinary and I love it and it's great and I love the love story within it. I love that like there's the whole, oh, we're from different, because Thorn turns out to be, like, the king king of the fairy, not just the king of Earth, and he's immortal and, like, all of this stuff. And, like, it's known that, like, they never work out and whatever when they fall in love. But against all odds, they're kind of working it out anyway. And, like, it's all, like, going kind of okay there's obviously a lot of challenges that keep getting split up you think that possibly someone's gonna die and everything this whole way through and like it's an amazing love story and it's an amazing adventure story and everything and then right at the end everything falls apart and like it's so dissatisfying it's not even funny because you read right up to the end and the end is so anticlimactic and so irritating. But then there's this epilogue at the end, which is meant to redeem it all. 
but the epilogue is like two sentences the first sentence being this is what the people of earth think that happened and then this is what the legend is that happened and that's meant to like redeem the ending and it doesn't like because it's just not fleshed out there's not enough there like the epilogue should have been way longer like if you wanted to to say that this is what actually happened or this is what people think happened or whatever you needed to like Cecilia you needed to flesh it out more like you can't just end it on a one sentence ending like no not after all of that not after three books and like after all the description you used you couldn't be more descriptive in the last sentence that's meant to be the most important sentence in the whole book like what the heck man like so incredibly frustrating because you can't actually tell if it ended the way you wanted it to or if it's not real because it's folklore and like everything and you're like so did it actually happen or didn't it and what actually happened because you've only given me a sentence of explanation here that was frustrating so the ending was very frustrating I still love the books and I love the story but in regards to the ending I'm a bit annoyed and a bit disappointed and so I feel like I kind of need to make it up in my own head as of to what actually happened and how it ended the way I wanted it to because it was a letdown and like I even looked up last night because I couldn't sleep after I finished it I even looked up last night what other people thought and if there's any fanfics or anything that like people did an alternate ending where like they fleshed out more and like Every, it's like a genuine general consensus that like everyone was disappointed by the ending and is like what the heck man like how can you not only end it like that but end it so abruptly like it really is like she knew where she wanted it to go but she just couldn't be bothered that's what it kind of feels like it feels like she had written this whole series and done all of this work and then right at the, the end she was like I just don't want to write it anymore and so I'll just end it with this brief sentence. Like, that's how it feels. And that, I, I, I do feel ripped off because of that. I do think that Cecilia is a brilliant writer. But I feel like she needs to explain why she did what she did at the end. And I feel like, I know it's like 20 years later, but I feel like she needs to come back and either rewrite that epilogue and like re-release it. Or she needs to bring out like a like fourth book that's like an afterwards kind of thing that even is just like if the folklore is true like go in depth of the folklore like something to flesh that last bit out and give us more something more satisfying because you can't end an epic series like that on such a low note in my opinion because I do believe that it like a lot of people have said like this story is almost as good as Lord of the Rings kind of on that high fantasy level and I agree with that but it falls short whereas Lord of the Rings doesn't because Lord of the Rings ends well and ends like regardless of whether it ends well like how you want it to or not it's actually fleshed out and it it's still climactic like it's not you don't read it and then you're disappointed in the end Whereas this is, you've gone through this whole journey and then it's like a cliff at the end and you're like, what the heck, man? Like, what do you mean? That's the end. And it's not because like, like even if it, like the ending is meant to be unhappy, that's fine because there's like tragedies happen, right? People read tragic books, but you need to at least resolve it properly and flesh out the ending a bit more so that it's not just this abrupt oh the story's over that to me is a bit annoying but overall I did like the series I do recommend it just keep in mind though when you're reading it that you might not like the ending either and if you are someone who's very affected by endings you should be very wary of that and yeah but I do recommend reading it for the journey and the series because it is a brilliant story overall um but yeah they were my thoughts <laughs> let me know in the comments below if you agree or you disagree 
I wanted to thank Angela very much for letting me borrow these books and I hope that you agree with this review as I do and that I did it justice. But yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.